Hey everyone, in this video, let's see how we can create a date table in DAX. And a date table is a very important table in your Power BI file or your data model because when you try to create calculations that involve time intelligence function, they actually rely on a full and complete date table. So let's say if you have a date column in your fact table and then you try to use that column inside a time intelligence function such as date add or the same period last year then your calculations will never return a correct result because there is a possibility that in your sales table the date column is not actually complete and by complete i basically mean that the date should start at the first of the january and should end at the 31st of december of the same year and let's get started and i will show you how we can create a date table in dax and for that let's click on the new table option and let's rename the table so I'm going to name it as dates2 because I already have a table in my model with the name dates and the first thing that I'm going to do is simply create a variable which will be date list and this variable will have a sub variable inside it and that will be var start date and I'm going to write date 2020 sorry 2021 the month will be one and the day will be one then another variable which will be end date i can write date 2021 12 31 so this will give me the all the dates for the current year and in the next variable what i'm going to do is simply return the dates between the from the start date till the end date by using the calendar function so it is up to me if i either either i want to create a new variable or simply use the return part so i can write return calendar and in the start date variable in the start date argument i'm going to use the start date variable and in the end date argument i'm going to write end date variable and let's simply return the date list variable and let's click outside of the code so that we can see what we are actually returning and once i confirm you can see that i have received a column which contains all the dates and i know that it contains all the dates because at the bottom row i get a number which is 365 and this is not a leap year so in this year we have 365 dates so which are starting from 1 1 2021 and end on 12 31st 2021 and now by using this list of date we can start adding more columns to this column and for that what i'm going to do is create another variable so let's name it as result because it is going to be the final variable in the in the parent in the list of parent variables so let's write generate and in the first argument i'm going to use the date list variable now it is up to you if you want to use the add columns function you can use that but i find that in case of creating a date table the generate function is much better because it, it allows the code to be neatly written and i will show you what i mean by that so first of all let's create another variable so i'm going to name it as current date and i'm going to retrieve the currently iterated date by the generate function over this variable so i'm retrieving this date from the row context of this variable and i'm going to write return and then i'm going to use the row function and this is one of the reason why I suggest that you use the generate function and not the add columns function because if you use add columns what you will need to do is simply write add columns date list date list and then you will create new columns again and again and again and that doesn't looks very pretty but in case of a date table if you use the row and generate construct then the code becomes more manageable and readable as well so let's remove the add columns part and i'm going to uncomment the generate code and inside row function i'm going to create another column so i'm going to name it as month and i'm going to use the month function over the current date let's close that and the generate function and if i click enter let's return the correct variable and you can see that i have received the month number for each cell which is 1 till 12 and following that logic we can create more columns as well so i can create calendar year number column 
that will be basically an year function over the current date current date let's close that and i've received the current year which is 2021 in this case and i can also create a month name column so let's write month month name and that will be basically a format function over the current date and in the quotes i'm going to write mmm and let's close that and that will return the full month name and if you want the simply the initials or the first three letters you can simply write three m's and click outside and it will give you the first three letters of each month now let's create few more columns so i can create calendar year that will be basically a representation of calendar year number but in a text format so i can concatenate cy with the with the code of year over the current date and let's click and confirm and let's add a space after the cy so that it makes some sense and i can create few more columns so i can write calendar year month number that will be basically an year of current date current date multiplied by 100 so let's press enter and in the last digit which is the units val place i'm going to add the month number so after 100 i'm going to write plus month of the current date so you can see that we have received a column that contains the calendar year number as well as the month number and this column is actually very useful in case if you do not want to use two different columns to while applying those columns into the filter context instead of that you can simply use a single column and push that into filter context and sometimes it can actually improve the performance as well so let's click on ok and what we can do is simply add a couple of more columns such as day of week number and that will be basically the weekday function over the current date and i want the week to start from monday so i can write 2 let's close that and i get 567 first of all let's add the day name as well so that we can identify if the number that we are getting is correct or not so i'm going to write day of week name and that will be a format function over the current date and i'm going to write ddd let's close that so in case of monday we are getting one in case of sunday we get a seven and now let's add columns pertaining to the quarter number so i can write quarter number and that simply utilizes the quarter function over the current date so we get three two one and four and now let's uh, add a text field for the quarter so i can write quarter name and i'm going to use the format function over the current date and to add a quarter there is a simple trick instead of using the concatenation what we can do is inside the quotes i can use the backslash and write qq and let's close that so you can see that i get q1 q2 q3 and q4 and now i can also add another field as sim similar to the calendar year month number so that in case if you are using two different columns you can simply use that while applying to the filter context so i can write calendar year quarter number and that will be year over the current date multiplied by 10 plus the quarter of the current date and if I close the formula bar you can see that we have a column with only four values which shows the month number as well as the year number and let's click on OK so before moving ahead let me just show you that we can actually slightly optimize the code that we have actually written so you can see that I am using the year function again and again so instead of doing that, I can simply store that value inside a variable. So I can write current year is equal to 
year over the current date and I can replace the year function with the current year variable everywhere so let's replace everywhere once again and following that that logic if in case you are adding multiple columns that reference month function quarter function multiple times you can simply create a variable before the row function starts and then you can use those variables again and again and that will actually improve the performance because then the DAX engine will not have to evaluate that function again and again and instead it will simply compute that variable or that function only once. So let's click confirm and see if nothing changes. So it looks good. I can sort that column by date and it looks good. So let's just change the data type of this column because it is not a date time column. So I'm going to remove the formatting of the time. And now what we can do is for now, what we actually did was simply create a date table that starts from 1st of 21st of January of 2021 and ends on the 12th 31st of 2021. But in most of the cases, what you are actually interested in is to create a date table based on a different table in your data model. So let's say in my, my data model, I have a fact table, which is sales table. And let's say I want to create a date table based on the order date. So let's see how we can do that. And I'm going to initiate or introduce two new variables. And the first one is going to be var min date. So simply going to extract the min date from the sales table from the order date column and then the max date as well. So the min date will contain the min date and the max will contain the max date and based on which I'm going to generate my start date. So for starting date, I can write the year of the min date and I do not need to change anything in the month and the day field because I always want to start the calendar from the 1st of January, but the year can be relative and depending upon the, the min date in our fact table or any other different table. And I can use the same code again in my end date variable and simply replace the min date with max date and everything looks good. So let's confirm that code and see if that is returning the dates based upon the sales table. So first of all, let's check the calendar year number column. So I get 2007, 8 and 2009 and based on that I'm getting 1096 rows. And if I go to the sales table and sort that column, so let's sort it by ascending order. So I get January 1st of 2007 and let's sort it by descending order. So I get 12 31st of 2009. So that means I have three years worth of data. So let's see if we have 2008 as well. And yes, we have some transaction for 2008. And based upon this logic, we were able to create a date table that starts at the min date or the starts at the min year of the sales table and ends at the max year of the sales table. And before wrapping up, what I would suggest to use that you always create at least one additional year in your date table. So let's say the first year that is being returned by the min sales order date is 2007. You would, you should actually try to aim for starting that calendar year or start starting that date table from 2006. So I can here write minus one and here I can write plus one. So I will show you why I'm doing that. So let's confirm that. And in the data model, I'm going to create a relationship between this table and the order date. So let's build that relationship. And if I go to the report view and bring the calendar year number column from my dates to table. So let's bring this column here and I'm going to bring the total sales measure so that we can get the sales amount for the given year. So at the moment, you can see that we have 2006, 7, 8, 9 and 10. But now those the 2006 and 2007 has been removed from the report because those years are actually reporting blank value. And behind the scenes, the summarize function actually runs by default and it actually removes any row which doesn't contain any value. So let's create another variable, sorry, another measure 
which will actually re return the value of the previous year so i can write same period last year sales and let's zoom in a little bit and i'm going to use the calculate function to modify the filter context around the total sales measure and i'm going to use the same period last year and the dates column from my dates to table dates to and if i close that and bring this measure into the matrix and let's increase the font size a little bit and let's format that as well so that i can get rid of the decimal places and it is more readable so you can see that in 2008 i get the sales amount of 2007 and in 2009 i get the sales amount of 2008 and in 2010 i am getting the sales amount of 2009 but let's say if we didn't have the 2010 in our date table then we wouldn't be actually reporting the sales amount of the previous year so let me just go back to the date table and if i remove the plus 1 and simply remove that and click on confirm you can see that for 2010 i am not reporting the sales amount of the previous year and that could be a problematic situation because sometimes when you try to compute the year over year calculation you actually need the additional year to show the growth from the previous year and that's one of the reason why i was i was suggesting that you actually include plus 1 and minus 1 year in your date table so that you can incorporate such kind of situation and that was all for this video and if you have any questions for me just let me know in the comment section and i will see you in the next video until then have a great day